any more. You're with Julian on the Brown Note and Anthony Albanese, 10 Ways You Can Win the Voice. So I have made it very clear on this show that I oppose the voice vote happening for two major reasons. One is that I don't like voting for other people's rights in a popularity contest. And two, the Anthony Albanese has proven to be a terrible campaigner who sort of reversed to victory in the general election. And the definition of the voice was so bad with the public and the campaigning was so bad, it's given a free kick to the populist right who were dead in this country, dead and buried. It's given them a year-long free kick for our overwhelmingly right-wing news media to just have a, have a go at Indigenous people for an entire year. And the, the danger of losing such a vote is, is horrendous. And I've gone through that at length, so I won't continue with that. I've said I'll vote for The Voice. Um, I just said I, I think for this country needs a Labour government in power for quite some time. And to throw this out there as something that people will use to try and get rid of Anthony Albanese and put us back in this two-year leader cycle, which has been terrible for the country, is just dumb. Um, and if you can't define it... So, number one way to win the vote for The Voice, and uh, it's a critical one, define it. Define the voice in a well-flowing, appealing sentence. Not doing so lets others fill the vacuum with falsehoods about what the voice stands for. I'm seeing people who no doubt promoted COVID and anti-vax science promoting the uh, these lists of things that will happen if the voice happens, such as Aborigines paying less income tax. You know, stuff like this that should be shot down in flames by anyone with half a brain in 10 seconds is filling the airspace because the majority of people struggle to understand what it is. Put it in one appealing, flowing, well-worded sentence. Two, acknowledge the voice is a referendum on Labour. It has got very little now to do with um, Indigenous Australians compared to an Australia going through a long heralded cost of living crisis. The media didn't care about when it was happening before Labour got in power but always care about when Labour are in power. Go after the Reserve Bank of Australia over interest rates. Make a case that the interest rate rises aren't for the benefit of the public at all. Actually be proactive and put yourself as the champions of tackling the cost of living crisis. Go after the Reserve Bank. Who is the interest rate rises benefiting? It's not benefiting Australians who have mortgages. And it isn't benefiting people who rent from people who have mortgages. So you're covering virtually every Australian. Apart from the banks, obviously. So make it acknowledge that this is a refer you're going to hold a referendum on your own government during the middle of a cost of living crisis. Very, very dangerous stuff. Th three, limit the exacerbating factors. Don't go out there saying you're going to hold a general election if your legislation doesn't get passed. You want to hold a general election now, you're going to get a general election based on the cost of living crisis. And watch out for any of these other distractive things that happen, like what's been going on with um, Indigenous land rights in Western Australia, because they will all be dovetailed by right-wing news media into the voice, whether they're connected with it or not. So be very careful about adding things to what the right can attack the voice for. Be very clinical about the definition of it. Number four, Peter Dutton has probably been advised by the cohorts in the right-wing media to stay out of this one. Because if he gets involved, he will look like a massive racist. And he is much better off sitting at the back and letting the right-wing news media and certain politicians do his dirty work for him. So drag him into it. Goad him. Goad the populist right. People like Pauline Hanson won't be able to take a back seat. They smell blood. She'll come out and be who she really is, which is a massively racist politician. That's good for you. It looks great to have these people tell you who they really are. Get these voices in the right-wing news media to really show the public of Australia who they are. Number five, go after the media. Don't sit back and let them be your friend, because they aren't. 
They majority support the Liberal Party from Channel 7, 9 and 10 to 2GB to everyone in the Murdoch press. They generally support the Liberal Party and want Labour in because the Liberal Party is so dangerous to the entire country that every now and again they need a Labour government in. But they want that Labour government to be as weak as possible. And if they can really demolish you on the issue of the voice losing, go after them. Pull them up when they're presenting falsehoods. Pull them up when they're presenting things that are completely racist. Fact check them all the time. You've got so many staff that can do this. Number six, understand this is a percentage game. We live in a Western world that is incredibly polarised. It doesn't matter what anyone says. A majority of voters will vote for the left-leaning party or the right-leaning party, no matter what happens. You are not going to reach these people that vote for people like Peter Dutton ever. Because they hate you. They've been trained to hate you their whole lives. Understand it's a tiny percentage of people that you need to reach. This is where the teals live. The liberal voter isn't the Peter Dutton fan. The liberal voter in general is the Malcolm Turnbull fan. But that party has been completely crucified like the Republicans in America and like the Tories in the UK by the populist right, who hammer anyone that doesn't form part of their vision. So go after those teal voters. They're the ones that actually really want to keep all their juicy money in uh, negative gearing and franking credits, but want gay people to be allowed to be married and action on climate change. Go for those. The other ones aren't going to vote for you ever. Number seven, probably arguably the most important, make this about now and about us, not about the past and about them, them being Indigenous Australians, past colonial history. Make it about all of us now. We've got a lot of people with migrant heritage in Australia from places like Southeast Asia that have no truck with white guilt over treatment of Indigenous Australians because they weren't there and they suffered it themselves. They suffered their own racist attacks when they came to this country. So they're not going to have any of this white colonial guilt. So make this about what's happening now. Show current racism. Show the fact and make the case that what is happening to Aboriginal Australians is happening now. We have a number of unenviable world records when it comes to the treatment of our Indigenous people. We have the widest disparity between life expectancy between Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australians of any country in the world of around 10 years. You'll die 10 years earlier on average if you're an Indigenous Australian. We have the highest per capita rate of imprisonment of Indigenous Australians and the highest per capita rate of Indigenous children in jails. Pull up these things in a manner that people can see that it is current behaviour, such as the John Howard intervention into the Northern Territory, um, what, around 15 years ago, one of the most racist and blatant acts that's happened from a Western nation towards Indigenous people. Show these things that, in, that are in terms that migrants can understand because they will, have, it, they will have experienced their own racism. So make it about that racism and make it in terms that white people can understand as well. Number eight, focus on the Indigenous Australians that are voting no and the fact that they will be standing alongside Pauline Hanson and her cohorts for all eternity. They are making a lot of cases, fair enough, about why they don't want the yes vote to win. But make out who, call these people out. Because some of them are just lackeys for the Murdoch press. And some of them are actually misguided. But make sure that they understand that for all eternity, they are standing with the very people who hate them the most. Make that case strongly. Number nine, look at similar votes in the past. When we've had similar civil rights votes that have failed or succeeded, including on Indigenous Australians, which was successful in the late 60s, have a look at how the ground lay then and what were the reasons for it succeeding or failing. Look to the past, look to the way that the entire country was looking at the issue and how it was presented and why it succeeded. And ten, finally, Anthony Albanese, in my 10 reasons, you could win the voice, 
be honest. It's been virtually impossible for politicians to be honest. And I say that particularly from the left, because the right, the populist right, have found it easier and easier to come out and blatantly say horrible things. So if you try and double speak or be too sophisticated in your language or pull the wool over people's eyes, we all sniff it a mile away. So be honest. Be honest as though you're going to lose. Be honest about every aspect of it in as simple a term as you can use. Don't try and be sophisticated at all. It's the Hillary Clinton versus Donald Trump thing. The fact that Hillary Clinton sounds like she's lying every time she opens her mouth, like she knows better than you and she wants to encourage you to do a certain thing a certain way. Even though she was standing for much better things than Donald Trump, Donald Trump sounded like he was being honest all the time about everything, even in the most horrible ways. And it, it rings through to the public, so don't try and be too clever. That's my 10 ways that Anthony Albanese could potentially win the voice.